kind of shook me up and I said, yo, that man, that man, that man, I used to pay a ball and healthy in my eyes. But somehow something else was going on, but which, you know, we don't know about that. It's not here. And so, brethren, don't take it for granted. Let's praise the Lord while we have a chance. Amen? Amen. And so, this morning, we have some lively choruses for you so you can get excited for God. Amen? Amen. I know that the time is in September, October, it's getting cold. And so you need to warm up. So we have some choruses to warm you up. Amen? Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. And so this morning, I want to share, I want to share quickly from John, St. John. John 9. John 9. Yeah, they brought to the Pharisees a man who had been no, sorry, wrong place. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, Jesus says, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva and put it in the man's eye. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Silo, Silo, which means sent. So the man went and watched and came on scene. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this a man who, was, who used to sit and beg? Some claimed he was. Others said, No, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am he. How then were, you, were your eyes open? He asked. He replied, The man they called Jesus made some mud, put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Silo and wash. So I went and washed, and then I came seeing. Amen? Bless the name of the Lord. They, you know the story after that they called it, the Pharisees came into the picture. You know, and they were doubting. They were doubting, you know, whether this man really was born blind now, you know. But the, the message I want to, to bring across is me, amen. I know what the Lord has done for me. The neighbors around you might be doubting, you know, is it real? Was he touched by God? But as the man who was born blind, when he was questioned and questioned and questioned, he said, well, one thing I know, I was blind, but now I see. So, you, you may be doubting whether or not Jesus is, is, is a, the Son of God, or He is real, or He is a fake. But I know that I was born blind, but praise the name of the Lord. And because that man touched me, I, I, not you for me, but I can see. Oh, praise. And so for me, He is a prophet. Amen? Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father in heaven, we, we, we come before you this, this Sabbath morning. We acknowledge that you are suffering. And Lord, we confess that, you know, many times we have not given you the glory that is due unto you. And we have not walked in your light. But we thank you that you are God of mercy and love and great compassion. And we thank you that each man's touch, each man's conversion is personal and individual. And so we want to praise you, O oh Lord. And so we ask that you will invoke that worship from within our hearts that we will exalt you this morning for that which you have done for each and every one of us, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. God ha 
how great is our God, how great is his name, he's the greatest one, forever the same, he God and the Father, all the mighty
are so good. Oh God, you are high and lifted up. You are exalted above all. But yes, then you were crucified. You were trampled on the ground. A precious rose of value. Trampled under the feet of men. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, Jesus. You are above all powers. You are above all kings. You are above all nature. All created things. You are above all wisdom. And above all the ways of men. Yes, name
I pray, mighty God, you take the scripture reading that as it read, Lord, that you may find room and root in our hearts, Lord, so that we can live by your words daily. I pray, mighty God, that you inspire the one who shall break the bread of life. Oh, God, the spoken word. You are the word, Lord. You are the living word. But we are glad that we have the, the written words that can be spoken at all times for all circumstances. The word declared that we should have a word in season and out of season. So now, Lord, the Christ may give us an in-season word through your Holy Spirit, mighty God, that he cannot lift our spirit, mighty God, and give us the courage and the strength to go on. For to bless the songs and everything that shall be said and done. Father, we pray that Holy Spirit will come and tabernacle with us, and that when we should have leave this place, we may say it was good for us to be here. Have your own sweet way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Sister Abby. You may be seated in my um, congregation. It is indeed a pleasure, indeed, it is a pleasure to be able to stand once more in the house of God, you know, just to proclaim that Jesus is Lord. It is indeed a pleasure and it's an honor to do such. Let's take time out to meet one another in particular, who's pastor, pastor in Ari. Sister Ruth, if you step around the back there, Sister Anthony, Sister Anthony, are you putting your hands together for them? So, appreciate them, of course. We are our role models, so to speak, in a lot of ways. And we just want to know that they do not really appreciate them a lot. Of course, community members and brethren, you know, and first time visitors today, we will be greet you in the name of Jesus. Those of you who are in cyberspace, we will trust that you enjoyed prison worship. And that you won't leave, you will stay because we have a lot more in store for you. He will just stay with us for the duration of the service today because we do believe that God has something special to give us today and we don't want to be selfish and take it out of ourselves while you to enjoy it as well. So, of course, we are here today to worship God, brethren. Aren't we here today to worship God? Yes. Well, we're here today to worship God and already a sense of a, a spirit of praise in us today. It, sounds, it feels good to me. And I hope God that He appreciates it. And of course, He will visit us today and bless us in a very special way. Praise God, brethren. Praise the name of Jesus. Thanks be to God. At this time, we have a scripture reading. It will be done by Sister Angelisa Harley. It comes to us today from Daniel chapter 4, reading from verse 19 through to verse 27. That's Daniel chapter 4, reading from verse 19 through to verse 27. Please stand as, of course, we will follow in our. Bibles are that which is projected on the screen by Sister Angelina. So we do read it for us. Praise God. Coming down from heaven, 
and sing. Kill the tree down and destroy it, yet leave there the stump of the tree, or the roots, sorry, thereof in the earth, even with a band of men and okay. My eyes are kind of the way right now, that's why I'm kind of taking a long time. Please bear with me. And whereas the king saw a watcher and the holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band, band of, iron. of iron and press in the tent. And grass is okay. I want to ask the. All right, let me read verse 23 again. And whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let its portion be with the beast of the field, till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation of King, and this is the decree of the Most High, which is come upon my Lord the King, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass, as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomever he will. And whereas they command to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. After that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness, and thy iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. Here in the reading. Thank you very much, Sister Arlene. For reading for us the scripture reading, and no doubt we'll be hearing more on that passage of scripture when the speaker for comes. Praise God, brethren. Are you happy to be in the house of God today? Are you happy to be out there today, church? I mean, in spite of the pandemic and all that, right? And it's more than, you know, the spread and people are dying, but thanks be to God, we have overcome. We have overcome. And we have overcome. We continue to overcome by the grace of God. We will continue to work on this God church. This God church. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah, man, I feel good to be the house of God today. At this time, I've been called on the word of Adrian Barrett to do the offer for us. And of course, the women will be ready. Get yourselves ready to sing by the time the offering are collected. Praise the Lord. As we continue to worship, was in a different format in, by way of giving, and to be more specific, monetary giving. And so we turn to scriptures to support our giving. And I'll read from Ecclesiastes 11, verse 1 and 2. That's Ecclesiastes 11, verse 1 and 2. Cast thy bread upon the water, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to self and also to eat, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. Casting your bread upon the water is like a merchant trading goods by water. Send it away a long and a long journey, distance, sometimes unknown, sometimes danger, danger, dangerous and risky. Yet the merchant trusts the water that it shall not be seen. 
just cutting away the holy water and perhaps um, not quick, but after many days it may return and it may return slowly, but it is sure. You see, a long voyage may better, a long voyage may better return. And our return of well-doing, our reward for well-doing may be very certain. I'd like to close Bobby as with me while I, I pray. Oh Father, loving King, ruler of this earth, we want to give you thanks for this another opportunity you have given to us to give you, and as we give to your honor and to your glory, may it use according to your glory. We look to you with every thanks. Thanks again for this another opportunity. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. At this time, it's my pleasure to call on the women's minister, ministry, and they will be minister to us in songs. Shall we bless the Lord?
last in the second one was really inspiring for your glory and everything. Just want to be where you are. Love is who you are this morning. We're about the image, we're just talking about the image of God. And you know what aspect of God's image is love. Peace is who you are. Praise God. Praise God. Let's pray for the women's ministry. And they'll continue to make themselves available to sing to the glory of God and to the edification of God's people. Praise God. Of course, we thank Brother Adrian Barrett for the offertory part of our worship today. And may God continue to inspire us well as he continues also to make himself available to be used by God. Praise God, Bridget. So what sense of such anticipation? Your attitude is something more of a to Bridget. Your attitude is something you're sensing. Me too! I'm anticipating something because we know that our world is over and they hear is that after the singing of the two songs that we will now hear the word of God. So could you stand there where and ask the congregation to stand kindly and as we show our appreciation Father, that the one of his enemies has made himself available to be used by God today. But most importantly, we're going to put our hands in anticipation for the meal that God is going to serve us today. So we're going to go further to our God, the one of his enemies, to come to you today. Congregation, to see the one of his enemies in the name of God. You are serving space. Don't move. Don't lose your focus. And we call it a word for you today. Thanks be to God. Divine revelation requires human intervention for an alteration. Divine revelation requires human intervention for an alteration. It is against the, the background of Nebuchadnezzar when he received the dream from God that I can be still because of what I learned from this particular passage. Let us pray. Father, we, we bow before you in the name of Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, because in him you are well pleased. Here we are as a church. We approach your word with humility. We pray that you will speak to us as only you can. May you glorify your name. May you exalt yourself. Have your own way as we tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. The the passage uh, talks about Nebuchadnezzar and the dream 
that he was given. Divine, according to the theme, is of relating to or proceeding directly from God. Divine, heavenly, Godlike. Revelation, a surprising or previously unknown fact that has been disclosed to others, require need, intervention has to do with participation, involvement, engagement. Alteration, change, adjustment, modification, or variation. I said the, the theme seek to highlight, point out that there are different types of revelation. There is the divine revelation. The different type of revelation in that there is the general revelation, the specific revelation. One writer, he said that the general revelation is indirect because the what is known is available to everyone, while the specific is directly to the individual, an individual, or sometimes a group. Direct revelation refers to communication from God to someone in particular. Revelation Church is something that we go after. Everybody wants a revelation. Everybody wants a word. Everybody wants to know the unknown. And so, God, I believe, was so careful when you read the, 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 the Bible. In that, what he has done is to reveal things about himself that only he himself can reveal. The Bible said that when God made man, he made man in his own image because we can never, we will never be able to know things about God if God don't reveal it. He made man in his own image and his, in his own likeness. There are some attributes, qualities that God chose to share with man. And there are some attributes that only God alone possesses those. God alone is immortal. God alone is all powerful. I praise the name of Jesus. God has chosen to reveal to us things about Himself. 
in that when you look on the very creation, you know that there is a God. General revelation, God reveals himself through his creation. We know because the Bible mentioned that it is God who created the heavens and the earth. And so here it is. We realize that God is interested in his people knowing him. Not just to know him, but to be conformed to his will. Because at least if you know someone, then you will understand their likes and their dislikes. And you will try to be careful now how you deal with them. And so God is interested. And notice how God would speak to his people. He would say, this and this is what you are to do. And this, this and this you are not to do. This is my will. These are not my will. Be obedient. If you are obedient, you will eat of the good of the land. But if you are not obedient, then such and such a thing, thing will happen. God is interested in making for himself a people and so he laid down how it is, what is it that he wants. I move to Daniel chapter 4. In that, Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniel is no stranger to us. More so because it was recently that the studies went on in the book of Daniel. I mean, Nebuchadnezzar himself was no stranger to revelation, divine revelation. Because it was in chapter 2 that he got a dream about of the statue. Different parts of it. And he got the interpretation after many fuss and the magicians, the soothsayers, trying to buy time. And he sent out a decree to destroy if they didn't remind him of the dream and also to give him the interpretation. So then it talks of Nebuchadnezzar was no stranger. The Bible said that the Lord revealed the thing to Daniel in chapter 2. And he was recognized as a man of God and the one who served the Most High God. In chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar given an account Verse 4 said, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and the flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid and the thoughts upon my bed and the vision of my head trouble me. He was a stranger to dreams and, and revelation. This time the Bible said that he was troubled. 
God has a way, church, of speaking to people regardless of their position in life. There are some people that some of us will never be able to speak to physically or be in their presence physically. But God can show up and speak to them. There are some places that we will never be able to go. But that is no problem to God. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, notice how he described his situation. He said, I was at rest in my house. I was flourishing in my palace. When all seems to be going well, in the confine of his home and on his bed, nothing to trouble him, no bad news, no disturbing report. Everything he wanted was at his disposal. It was peace. But God chose to speak to him at that time. Amen. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And the Lord showed him. You know, we may write off people and look at authorities and say all manner of evil. But God has a way of speaking to them. Amen. And that is why as a church, the Bible would encourage us or discourage us not to talk against authority, those in government. Be careful of what you say about them. Amen. Somebody said that you respect them, but you reject their moral depravity. And even as a church, we are told to be obedient, be respectful to those who are in authority, even to those who are harsh. Because God has a way of working out things in his own time. But he looks at our attitude towards authority and towards others. I praise the name of Jesus. Amen. If you look at David's attitude towards Saul, you will, we will take a, 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 a page out of his book. We have many reasons and occasions to destroy him. But look at him. Look at his attitude. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. And so God decided that now is the time that I'm going to speak to you, King Nebuchadnezzar. And the dream was given to him. He was not the only person that God spoke to. That God talked to in dream and vision as rulers, as king. God spoke
spoke to uh, 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 is, 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 is this particular king is named Misli. But Abraham, when Abraham decided that he was going to spare his life, he said to his sister, he said to his wife, if they ask you, tell them that you are my sister. Because in case they find out that you are my wife, because you look so good, they will kill me because they are not because they are not God-fearing King of Bimelech. Right. And so, he did that when he was asked, who is this lady, sister? And so King Abimelech took her. But the same night, God showed up and said to him, you are a dead man. If you touch that woman because she is the wife of a prophet. She is married. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. And so you know the story. He started reasoning with him, with, with, with God and saying things. And God said, I know you did it out of the innocence of your heart. But I'm the one who keep you from messing up. God speak to kings and different people in authority. It was nothing strange and new about Nebuchadnezzar. The Bible talks about God revealing things in dreams and vision. But it is not every dream and every vision is from God. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Some dreams, the Bible said it is out of the abundance of your business. You have dreamed. Some vision is only from your imagination. But there is a dream, there are dreams that God would speak to his people true. Not everyone. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Because when Moses was before God with his sister Miriam and Aaron, God said to them, as a prophet, I talk to, to true dreams and vision and hard words. But unto this one, I talk to him face to face. I'm saying there are dreams, there are visions that is from God. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. And so God showed him in the vision, in the dream, a tree. The Bible described it in such a way that it went, it was so tall that it went up to heaven. And it was flourishing, the branches, the leaves, covering a vast area in so much that it provided shade. The fruits, the Bible said, provide for many. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. The beast of the field, the fowls of the air, benefited from it. And that sound good in the dream. But he noticed in it his head was on his bed. And from heaven, a voice came that it was the tree was supposed to be cut down. 
Praise the name of Jesus. was disturbing. But there was a ray of hope in that the stump was supposed to remain. That is mercy. He didn't understand that that was mercy. He didn't even understand the, the dream. The Bible said he was troubled. He was afraid. In verse 5, I saw a dream which made me afraid and the thoughts upon my bed and the vision of my head troubled me. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. He needed an interpretation. Unlike the first dream where he couldn't remember and he was asking for them to remind him of the dream and give him the interpretation. This one he remembered, but he did not have the interpretation. Lord, have mercy. He was eager for the interpretation. He wanted somebody to clarify this thing, to come understand it, but I know that there is a message that is important. Yeah. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Yeah. Divine revelation. Yeah. For if God reveal something, it must be for a reason. Right. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. The Bible said he called for soothsayers, the magicians. None of them were able to. But Daniel, well, such a. When he approached him, the Bible said that for one Power. He was there astonished. To the extent, church, that Nebuchadnezzar was encouraging him, comforting him for the interpretation. He was eager for the interpretation. Verse 19. And then Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, was a stunned for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Belshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee, and the interpretation to them. The dream was given. He was afraid. It troubled him. But he was eager for the interpretation. It would mean nothing to him if there was a dream or a vision and there was no understanding. But he wanted the interpretation. He himself was troubled, but he was encouraging the prophet, the man of God, not to be troubled. Daniel started talking and explaining to him, Sir, the dream is for you. The tree, it is thou, verse 22. O king, thou art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown and reach unto heaven, and thy dominion to the ends of the earth. 
And whereas the king saw a watcher and an holy one coming down from heaven, saying, Hew down the tree. To his surprise, there was a pronouncement against him that he didn't even realize. For probably if he had known that the vision, the dream was for him and that he would have been reduced, if you may, I don't know if he would have been eager for the interpretation because a lot of times we are interested in a word. We are interested in unlocking mystery, wanting vision. But what comes with it, when it is not in our favor, then we are uncomfortable. And sometimes so bitter that the messenger is killed, assassinated. He was eager for the interpretation. And when it was given to him, notice what happened, church. In verse 27, this is the part that when I read this passage, drive home something to me. When the interpretation was given, because that was what he wanted, Daniel didn't leave it right there. It was not left alone. But verse 27 said, Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee and pray of thy sins by righteousness and thy iniquities by showing mercy to the poor if it may be a lengthening of thy Tranquility. You see that church? God in his wisdom and his mercy saw Nebuchadnezzar. He would have been the one who was blessing him. Amen. Because when you look at his track record, I mean, you name it. He defeated. The dream itself confirmed the kind of might and power, authority that was given to him. To the extent where people were benefiting near and far, God said, this is how you are. This is how I've allowed you to flourish. But there is a problem. You are going down a particular path that I'm taking you in my confidence. I'm revealing to you what is it that you have, what you possess, the authority and influence that you are wielding. But I have a problem with you. The praise the name of Jesus. Lord have mercy. As a matter of fact, the people who you have in captivity, they are my people. The praise the name of Jesus. The only reason why they are your subject is because of their attitude. Please me, shoot! 
Lord, have mercy. If they play their card right, if they were obedient, if they follow my will, then this would not have been their predicament. I'm telling you, where they are, I am the one who is responsible for this. Lord, have mercy. Nebuchadnezzar received the dream. You give him credit for being eager for the interpretation. But when God gives a vision or a revelation, it's not just for mere information, glory. It's not just for mere information. When God gives a revelation, it is an indication of his mercy. Lord, have mercy. When God reveals his will and reveals what is happening, it is important to understand that it is not that the person is special or of some special place, but it's that Break 
انعطاف بلا كسنس لا 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 and this is the part of the theme church that said requires requires human intervention for alteration because you see if the wages of sin is death and if God reveal a particular thing and said if you continue down this path you are going to be destroyed if you don't change if there is no regard for the revelation what will happen the end will be clear and definite Daniel in an attempt to king the God who gave this interpretation is serious the God who revealed the thing to you is purposeful but he's gracious he has within his realm of thing as, as to how to deal and address with matters if you humble yourself Lord have mercy change your attitude realign yourself to his will then things may be different but you have to do something that is the thing church it won't happen automatic the revelation was given so that a change can take place. Lord have mercy. Nebuchadnezzar break off the sin. How? By righteousness. And thy iniquities by showing mercies to the mercy to the poor. And if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. You see the church? Good sound counsel after the interpretation. And you know, brothers and sisters, one would have thought, having received such an interpretation and advice then the king would have fallen in line because he would have had revelation before he would have had dream before he would have had uh, interpretation before but it didn't happen because the bible said in verse 28 
Bible describe it? It said, because the judgment of God is not executed speedily, the heart of many walks cool. So you may do something to them. And because you never drop them, God never punish you. Same time, then what happened is that we get comfortable in the thing continuing. But God is not mocked, brothers and sisters. Whatever a man saw, that shall he reap. Nebuchadnezzar was given a vision. God spoke to him. God gave him the interpretation. The servant of God clarified the thing and give him good counsel. But day one, nothing happened. First man, second man, up to the twelfth man, he thought all was done and over. It was forgotten. But if God makes a pronouncement, you take it serious. Even if it is, is the person under your
interpretation after interpretation, but still in the same condition, we have to be careful. Lord, have mercy, because when the revelation comes and the interpretation comes, it is that an adjustment should be made. Lord, have mercy. He stood at the end and listened to him. I built for the house of the kingdom by my might, my power, and for my honor, and for the honor of my majesty. You're wrong, Nebuchadnezzar. You're wrong, King Nebuchadnezzar. It was not built for your power. It was not built for your majesty. It was not built for your authority. I give this to you so that you will honor me. Lord, have mercy. It was never about you. It is about me, God. Wrong statement. Lord, have mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weren't you listening to the uh, the prophet? No, no, no. For if you were listening, if you took it serious, if you took the word of God serious, then your utterances and your behavior would not result in this. Anytime you see this manifesting itself, self-manifesting, Anytime there is a manifestation of self, then the ear is listening to the wrong voice. Not taking the word serious. For if you were listening to the right voice, you would have known that it is not about you. Lord, have mercy. Not your majesty. Pride. Speaking. Ancient Greek described pride as a personality quality of extreme or foolish pride or dangerous overconfidence, often in combination with or synonymous with arrogance. Huh? It is the condition of the mind and the state of the heart. Overconfidence. Dangerous personality quality. Do you know who I am? Huh? What brother, sister? Let me tell you who you are. Never can never. You are in a king position. But thus you are and thus you shall return. There is one Lord, have mercy. You don't have to be proud, loud to be proud. Lord, have mercy. Don't think that the, the only time pride exists is when the individual does not talk, talk, talk. Sometimes you see there seated well when the man is high and proud. Lord, have mercy.
it was grace and mercy. I said, when I look at this in the church, in the thing, I said, it's only grace and mercy. For some time, we are traveling on a particular road and the revelation of the word has been given. It is still there. And if it was left only for God judgment, we would have been destroyed. But his mercy still to kick him. Because Nebuchadnezzar deserved death. Because it was not because of lack of revelation and lack of interpretation and lack of good advice. It's disregard. Lord, where am I in this? Because I'm thinking that preaching to you, but I'm preaching to myself. Where am I in this? Are there some things lingering? Are there some messages given? Are there some interpretation given? Because I never, I never understand. But the interpretation was given because I was interested in the interpretation. But by the interpretation, what was my position? Are we seated? Are we seated on some unfinished business? God, the Bible said, when he spoke in the self, self same hour, Verse 33. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men. And he did eat grass as oxen. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his ears were grown like eagle's feather and his nails like you see that, brothers and sisters? When we reject God's counsel, you don't know how far you will go. <laughs> Sometimes when you call and some things are happening out in the world and we pine and we want to be careful. Be careful. At, and at the, the end, of his days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and my understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High, and I praise and honor him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation and all inhabitants of earth are reputed as nothing and he does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants on earth the Lord of mercy and none can spare his hands or say unto him what to stop in other words, the king was brought low. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was the king down to nothing. He said when he came to his senses, he said there is no God like Jehovah. Uh, <laughs> for some time, all that it takes is for God to just move a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you understand. Nothing on earth. <laughs> this is not 
brothers and sisters? Yeah, yeah. But it takes our intervention. Yeah, we, when a revelation is given, it's not about how special we are. No, 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 no. It is about how special God is. When we get the interpretation, it is about how merciful God is. Heaven talking to earth. Yeah, yeah, grace and mercy at work. Yeah, this is about to happen to you because you're on the wrong path. But if you change your position, if you cry out for mercy, somebody saw me when I was sinking out in the desert, so laden with sin, a prison of Jesus. Ready to die, but grace and mercy, it must be Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters, he was a, afforded the privilege because it's not many who spurn the world, who reject the world. It's not everybody. Got the second chance. Huh? Some reject, go out there, and never return alive. Die in their sin. Yeah. God was merciful here. But don't push it. Lord, have mercy. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ. The righteous, or praise the name of Jesus, if he reveal it to you, brother, sister, change it. If he reveal it to you, cry out for mercy. Mercy, there was great, and grace was free. Pardon, there was multiplied to me. It's not for you to walk around. And with your chest high, say, I am the revelator. I have a revelation. It is a call for action because the word will judge you just like all. It will judge the preacher. Amen. Brothers and sisters, think about it. Is there a revelation lingering? Is there an uncomfortable matter in the revelation that is supposed to be addressed. Don't think that because time passed, it is over. If you're alive now, it can be changed. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. We bless the Lord, church. We bless the Lord. Yes, God. We listen to the word of God. The message that has come to us today from the servant is for you and Annie to really examine ourselves and to see how we are going to apply these words to our hearts so the requisite change will be effective. We continue to pray with the Lord. We continue to bless the Bible's image and continue to keep him in the palm of his hands. So of course he will continue to speak to us as the Lord gives in our terms. Praise God. Of course we'll be closing shortly and we'll ask the prison worship team to come. And help me sing hymn number 55 from the worship of Songbook. And as usual, we will allow others who were persons who require to have prayer made your behalf to come to the altar. So as a prayer, closing prayer is also made, you can be prayed for or the situation can be made known to God. So prayer request let's come. Of course we ask the Pastor Harry to pray for those who will come to the altar. And of course for closing, Sister Bygrave's son, this Adrian Shaw, who is in the hospital, his heart is beating too fast. So prayer request has come for him. 
There's one pair of kids, which is the back of the sun. A pair of kids for Buddha Hind as well. You know, Buddha Hind has not been doing well of lately. So of course, keep him in your prayers. We'll pray for him now. A pair of kids for Lois Bailey. She's in the hospital as well. Take a look for me. And uh, another uh, request here. It's Reeves. Good morning. Family, happy Sabbath. Oh Lord, thank you, Lord. I'm asking you for prayer for my son, my children, and for the strength of Jesus. I be well in you. For Sister Shirley Davis and also for Sister Lou Barnes. So of course, you know, the prayer requests are here. And you know that the serve of God is able to answer prayer. Don't be church. Don't be church. So when the prayer is made, I want to stand in faith. And you inside of space. You might not be able to send your prayer request, but lift your hands in faith. It's God, it's only present. Put it in church as we sing in number 55 for the worship song book. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. A wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of a rock. We have rivers of pleasure I see. He hideth my soul. Praise and worship.
the Lord and the rich people to attend for worship today. If you're here and you're not feeling too well in your soul, I mean, you heard the word. Come to the altar as the message came in. A revelation has come over and over. But revelation coming is not adequate. It's not the end of it. But we start to revelation. So we we'll sing the last stanza today. And we have to, of course, ask Pastor Harry to come to pray for those at the altar and for those at the altar. Also, for the prayer requests that have come in. And as I said before, you inside this place, just give your faith. Give your faith. God is able to meet your needs. When clothing is bright and transported, I rise. Praise God. When clothing is bright and transported, We thank you for our spare lives, O oh God. We are glad that we could come into your house to worship you. We thank you, God, that you have been good to us. You have been merciful. And we have come to trust in your mercy. And so as we come in this hour of prayer, we are relying on your mercy. For, O oh God, that we have no right to be standing in your presence except you had shown us mercy our righteousness our holiness and our deserving to stand in your presence of god amounts to nothing but corruption your words declare our righteousness are as filthy rags and so it is with humility that we come to this moment of prayer and we kneel in your presence. We bow in your presence. We step forward in acknowledgement of our need of you, God. And in this time of need, we pray that you will bow down your ear to us and hear us. For, O oh God, that we perish without your help. We ask as we come that you will search our hearts. And, O oh God, as your words have come to us, if there is a revelation, if there is an inspiration, if there is a word of direction, if there is a word of correction that you have sent and we have been missing and we have been ignorant or arrogant, we confess and we repent of it. O oh God, we ask that the stern warning that comes with the revelation and the interpretation of what is wrong, the word of repentance that comes of God, may we take heed to it. May we repent if peradventure you may release us, O God, from the impending destruction. We ask you, Lord, 
searcher of the heart, nor of the thoughts and intents, that, O oh God, you will come to our rescue, come to our refuge, come to our aid, help us to beseech you. May we learn the lessons of your word, and, O oh God, turn, make the necessary adjustment so that we may be spared destruction. Oh God, that is our prayer as we come before you. Having heard your word, we pray, God, that we will not stiffen our necks and harden our hearts, but we will humble ourselves before you. For your words declare, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due time. So we thank you for your servants who serve today, O oh God, as instruments that you could use to convey your word to us. Thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit that brings conviction. And we thank you, God, for sensitivity and responsiveness to your Spirit's move that we can come to you in prayer. We ask you now, God, to be here. please have mercy upon those on whose behalf requests have been made for prayer. Oh God, we remember some of the names, you know them all. Sister Bygrave's son, Sister Annette and her children, Brother Hines, Sister Newhart, those we remember, but we know of others. We have in our midst our own, Brother Vassal, his family. We have, oh God, those who have been with us but are not here today. Sister Barbara Smith, Sister Gray, Sister Patterson. Oh God, Sister Jackson, Brother Newman, Brother Williams. We mentioned those, but God, we pray. Omniscient one, you who know everything, we pray that in a comprehensive way you may breathe upon them breath of God. Hallelujah. Fill them with life and new energy, vitality, healing may come to them, O oh God. For our hope and expectation for deliverance comes from you. And we pray it may please you to minister healing. We pray for others, O oh God, none of our fellowship. O oh God, we pray for Sister Barbara Wilson, Brother Jeffrey. We pray, God, for others who have lost loved ones. Sister Adams, Deacon Daly, O oh God, the prophets. Others, O oh God, who struggle in this time of difficulty. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ, that you'll bring healing and comfort. And we pray for protection of God against dangers, many of which are much of which we may not be able to see with the naked eye. So we thank you, God, that we have this refuge, this time of prayer, this hope that make another shame, this assurance that you're with us. Hallelujah. And that you will come to our aid. Thank you for hearing our prayers. And we ask now, as we bring this service to a close, that you dismiss us with your choicest blessings. May your word dwell in us richly. May it bring forth fruit unto eternity. We ask these mercies in Jesus' name. And everybody who received it say, Amen. Amen. Now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit and Comforter. Rest remain and abide with us all now and forever. Amen. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him in the noon time. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him when the sun goes. Thank you.
Special 